Hello guys, we had so much success with the Peterbilt truck that I thought I'd go and take a look at the man truck and see if we could get any further with it. What I'm going to try and do today is add some drive to the rear of the truck here. So if you remember from the video when we took this apart, all our axles are solid axles. So we have no motors, no gearboxes and even our front axle is a solid axle there's no steering either so we kind of have to make everything from scratch so what i did was get a couple of these little gearboxes here which i thought would fit uh, four of them in so one driving each rear wheel i found these motors on a little uh, robotics website and i know they won't be as strong as the n20 motors they're uh, a lot smaller but uh, because they fit in so well and we can get the four of them in, I thought we'd get them, give it a go and see if it worked. So, so the first thing I did was 3D print a little wheel hub that pretty much imitates one of these rear wheels here. So you can see there was just two uh, kind of larger diameter circles on a thinner uh, cylinder. So that's basically what I recreated here, except up the middle I have a thicker um, a thicker little axle, I suppose, that's gonna support the uh, weight of the of the truck, hopefully, as well as the thinner axle. I left a hole in the middle of the hub so we can mate our gearbox section into the hub, and that'll also help to support it, or at least that's what I'm hoping. So when you take the rubber off the wheels like that, you mount them and you get uh, something that looks like this. So a little wheel hub. That seems to work out all right and on our axle here we have a rectangular uh, kind of hole that just fits onto our gearbox and we can get a screw down through the center here and with any look that part will work out all right so the part that this mates to is this little section here so i have my four uh, motors in here little slots for them and the motors just slide in there and I left a little hole here to let the axle down and you can see from this one or hopefully you can see so when you put the axle in it comes down alongside here to mate with our gearbox that comes down we line up the rectangle and in it goes we just need to put our screwdriver or our screw in there tighten it up and then that's going to mate onto our frame so go in something like that if you line it up right Cutting the wires. Comes in like that. So you can see I misjudged the height of it slightly, so I'll need to put a couple of little washers or a spacer or something on the back to get the wheel height proper. But um I lined the screw holes here up with the uh, kind of solid bits of the frame here. So all I should have to do is drill a few holes and screw that together. We basically have all the pieces we need here, I just need to put them all together. I'm missing one of my uh, tyres, not sure where that went to, but I'll find that. And in the meantime, we can just run it with the one tyre and we'll see how much power it has. It mightn't even have enough power to push the truck along, so that'll be the next thing we do. I'll put this gearbox section together and mount it in the frame here. Then we can just, we'll take the front axle. Uh, add the cab because that's the heaviest part and then just see if it'll roll even without steering can the motors drive the truck along okay well i got my gearbox in here it's uh, basically just screwed into the frame that there was there before so nothing too special like i said i didn't find that tire yet um, i have my four motors in there i wired each set of motors in parallel so the motors on the right are in parallel the motors on the left are in parallel and that gives me four wires coming up here and then i just used bits of wires that i had here to connect them all together so that i have only one channel of the motor driver uh, on this little test board one channel is driving all four motors so there's no uh, independent control between left and right which there will be on the final truck when when i do this finally i'm going to do the kind of simulated differential that I did on the TW35 on this truck but for now just for testing 
I have it hooked up to one motor driver because just because that's the code that was on the on that board so that'll do for this and we're just using our 3.7 volt battery so first thing take a look at if we gently push the throttle forward we'll see that the wheel with least resistance moves first because it takes a little bit more current to push the wheel that just has a little bit more friction on the on the axle I suppose and be the same on the other side see one moving before the other looks like that wheel there is a uh, quite a bit of friction on it. it's not just perfect it's uh, moving slowly it's like catching catching slowing and going so we've uh, no steering but Will the uh, motor even have enough power just to push the truck forward and back? That's what we want to find out, so let's try it out. So, no problem really there, moving at all. We have a nice kind of slow control. don't know if you can see that in the camera, but this wheel is obviously not... It got that much friction on the ground. It's, it's just kind of sliding there. But the benefit of having both of those wheels driven is that if we go over, say, a ramp or some sort of a hump on the road, this wheel will be in contact with the road, but this one won't. So we'll still have a little bit of driving power, we'll half our pushing power, I suppose, and only be driving by these two wheels if we were going over a hump. But at least we'd have some sort of a drive, and equally, if we went into a dip, the front wheel and the rear wheel would be in contact with the road and the middle one wouldn't so it kind of works that way too we, we have a little bit of push all the time but it's better on the flat it'll work better on the flat and that's where we probably are going to use it most because well my diorama is mostly flat okay well we know it works without a load so what if we throw on this uh, tractor here it's probably one of the heaviest tractors i have that will fit on it so let's see if we'll push that and there doesn't seem to be any problem with that at all. So I think I'd call that a success. Seems to be a reasonably uh, strong gearbox. Uh, probably it won't pull a full load of gravel. Well, it won't pull it up a hill. It'll probably pull it on the flat though. And that's probably good enough, I'd say. Um, the other benefit of using these small gearboxes is we've loads of room now to set up some sort of gearbox for a, a tipping mechanism for the for the dumping part of this truck but so far so good i think the next thing i'll probably look at will be the steering so that we can get all of that wired up and then uh, add some lights you want to see beacons and headlights and tail lights that kind of thing then maybe uh, we'll get the the dumping part of it working i'd say we'll have loads of room for a big motor so i don't think that's going to be too much hassle so that's the motors all set up in that model i think it's worked pretty good if you liked it don't forget to hit the like button and if you have any comments or suggestions let me know below the video and uh, as always thanks very much for watching